purpose in his own generation. He died. And then he was buried with his fathers. And then his body decayed. So there was David that was born. Then there was David that served God's purpose in his generation. And there was death. That's just telling us how our lives are supposed to be. While we are alive, what are we supposed to be doing? Say it again. What are we supposed to be doing? So say after me. Say, I am here to serve the purpose of God in my generation. And this is so important because we only have our time, our lifetime, our generation to serve God's purpose. Isn't that true? After we sleep, then we can't do that anymore. There's a purpose for when we are there. There's an eternal purpose. But for while we are here, we only have this opportunity. And it's a, it's, it's an, it's, it's a f- finite um, opportunity. There's a timing. We need to serve God. And even sometimes there are seasons of life where you can do some things. There are times when you are single and you can do things. There are times when you are married and you are limited in some things and you can do some things. There are times when you have kids. There are times when, you know, there are are also seasons. The key is to what? Serve God. God's purpose in your time. Serve God's purpose in your time. So we need to live that purpose-driven life. Amen. Say, I live that purpose-driven life. And I forget every other thing. Okay, so now the next question, which I have answered, but I'm just revising it before moving forward, is what is God's purpose? What is God's purpose? When you say serving God's purpose in your generation, what is God's purpose? I always try to simplify it because, you know, you hear a lot of messages about purpose. Now, you know that there are individual purpose. There's something that, okay, for, just get, let me give you a good example of individual and collective purpose. Look at this, this, en, this entire room, right? This entire room. The light shining on me, they have their individual purpose. Isn't that true? The projector has its own individual purpose. Isn't that true? The screen has its own individual purpose. The microphone has its own individual purpose. But everything together, what is the purpose of everything together? What's the purpose of everything together? The worship of God, right? The worship of God. Do you get it? Everything together is for one overriding purpose. But every one of these elements, they have their own individual purpose to contribute to the overriding purpose. Do you all get that? So, but you need to know the overriding purpose because, for example, if there is no overriding purpose... This microphone can be used. I can come here right now and then I start to rap. Uh, what's, what's, um, give me the crudest uh, rapper. Your way. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, Little Wayne. Is that Little Wayne or Little? Okay, good. I thought it was Your Way. You don't have to have so. <laughs> if, if you told me it was Your Way, I would have believed it, you know. Cause <laughs> so, Little Wayne, okay. So, I come here now and I start using it to rap Little Wayne. You know, and all of you start, you know, to do Little Wayne. Do you know that? <laughs> what what did you say are you like <laughs> all right so i do little wayne now the microphone is fulfilling a purpose isn't that true but what is happening it's not fulfilling the writing purpose right because the writing purpose is what for this whole thing to glorify god right isn't that true so do you get do you get the illustration so everybody needs to to, to be to understand the unifying purpose and that's when your individual purpose will be in sync you know, sir, because you can be doing things. This microphone, I can be using it to do, yeah, you, ah, ah, ah. It's still doing something, right? <laughs> but it is not what? <laughs> it's not glorified. It's not the overriding purpose. It doesn't fit into the overriding purpose. So many people are very active. Do you get that? Very active. V- some people even very compassionate. You know, sir, some people, I mean, they are very hardworking. But if you don't understand the overriding purpose, then you are like sounding brass and what? And tinkling cymbals. Like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13. There's a need to understand the overall purpose. So that we can all beat and there can be a symphony, a harmony for him. So what is the overriding purpose for everything? Please, I want you guys, I want this thing to, to just be in your heart. I tell you, it will change your life. It will change your life if you, if you have this thing inside yourself constantly. That this is the reason why I live. What is the overriding theme and the purpose of everything? Romans eleven thirty six. 
Romans chapter 11, verse 36. What is the overriding theme? The purpose of everything. Romans chapter 11 and verse 36. Quickly. Everybody, let's read it together. I want to go. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Now, go to the NLT because the NLT helps us better. It said everything, NLT says, for everything comes from him and everything exists by what? And is intended for what? For his glory. All glory to him forever. Everything is intended and created for his glory. Everything must glorify God. Everybody say after me, say, everything must glorify God. That is when you are fulfilling the overriding purpose. It is for his glory. Whatever you are doing must be to the glory of God. That's the uniting overriding purpose of the whole of creation. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1. In everything you do, I've read all these things. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. Quickly. But you know, we need to keep reminding. Sorry, 10 verse 31. I mean, 10 verse 31. 10 verse 31. Hey, everybody, let's read together. I want to go. So, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all. So, if you can sing little win, do you get it? And you can find a way for it to glorify God. Then sing it. But I don't know. I can't, you know, I don't understand how it can. <laughs> right? But, I mean, you don't know if you can connect it to what? To God's glory. Then it works with his purpose. Do you get it? Because the overriding theme of everything, you, everything you do, must be for the glory of God. Now, think of, think of it. Eating and drinking is fundamental. Isn't that true? So if you are supposed to eat and drink for the glory of God, what about marry? What should be the purpose of your relationship and marriage? No, I want you guys to know that, to tell me that you are getting this. What should be the purpose of your marriage and relationship? Should you get in a relationship that you don't have a clear definition of how this will bring glory to God? No. You know, that was part of what you need to discuss first of all is that how is this going to bring glory to God? How? Business, even investment. There are some investment that, are, that produce money, but ethically, they do not work for me. Do you get what I'm saying? I cannot invest in a cigarette company, even if I'm going to make a million out of it. Do you get what I'm saying? I cannot. It's not, it's not all about money. Where do I put my money? First of all, I need to find out what is the ethics of it. What is it going to be producing? Is it going to fill the earth with God's glory? Or is it going to be filling the earth with junk? Am I going to get to heaven and God is going to ask me, say, you were responsible for the soul of some kids that were because you were investing in MTV. Are you getting what I'm saying? Or whatever, or whatever thing you are investing in. So I'm saying that we need to think, you know, like Rick Warren says, he said we need to become world-class Christians. Everybody say world-class Christians. World-class Christians are Christians that think differently. They don't think just about themselves. They think, the, you know, they think in a different way. They have a different way of thinking. We don't just do anything. Thank God. I mean, for those of you who have been there, ethical investments, you know, that you, I mean, they, they, they even have people who specialize in all those kind of a thing. But I'm saying that everything, someone say everything you do must result in God's glory. Must result in God's glory. I cannot invest in a company that produces the guns that they use, you know, that, you know, they distribute downtown or sell drugs that destroy people. Or a marijuana company. Amen. So what does Pastor Land do? I invest in a weed company. Say so it's medical marijuana. Okay, all right. <laughs> Are you listening to me? I mean, if I can't come and say it, that's all of my investment is that. You, you need to think, because we are all ministers. Isn't that true? Say everything is intended for, is intended for his glory. One last one. Isaiah 43 verse 20. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 20. We are for God's glory. Someone say, we are for God's glory. 
The wild animals honor me. So even the animals, the jackals and the hulls, because I provide water in the desert and stream, in the wasteland, to give drink to my people, my chosen. The people I formed for myself, that they may do what? That they proclaim my praise. Go back to that place and, you know, if you go to another translation, maybe KJV, it says that they may declare my, or, you know, glory or something, that they may declare my praise. The people I am formed, KJV, the people I am formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. So they shall declare my praise. Um, and if you go further, go down further, uh, go down further, let's say it. Um, but of course, you know that that praise is talking about glory. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, and thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. What's in verse 23? Verse 23. Thou hast not brought me some car to... Da, 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 da. You know, leave that. There's a, you know, if you go on, there's a particular place there which says these people that I, am formed, that I formed for my glory. Amen. I formed them for my glory. But you know, the praise also says it. You know, praise is glory. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, you know, uh, you know cre- uh, uh, whom, so I say, for you are a chosen generation, a royal priest, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that they may declare what? My praises, or the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we are here to show forth God's glory. We are here to show forth God's glory. Someone say the overriding purpose of everything is God's glory. Say the ultimate purpose of life. And all of creation is to enjoy, to radiate, to spread, and to return glory to God. Everything. So, why do you want excellence? Because you want to show for the glory of God, right? Why do you want to be the best in everything you do? Because you want to show the glory of God. Why do you want to... Um, you know, come to church because you want to come together and what? Glorify God. Why do I want to get married? Because I want a partner that will join me in my mission of spreading the glory of God on the earth. Did you get it? That's it. Why do I, why, what about my money? Why do I want money? Why do I want a lot of money? Why do I invest? Why do I do that? Because I want to be able to have the means to do what? To, to glorify, to spread the glory of God. That's the purpose of everything. That's the purpose of everything. Hallelujah. That's the purpose of it all. Amen. Someone says, spreading the glory of God. Psalm 19 verse 1 says, you know, even the whole of creation was created for that purpose. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There's no speech or language where their voice is not heard. So even, even all, the, you know, cre- all of creation, every time you look at the skies, look at the complexity of the human bodies and all that, they're all showing for the glory of God. They're all fulfilling their purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. So you get it. Say the overall theme of my life is God's glory. That is it. That's your purpose. Never ever tell me I don't know my purpose. Pastor Land, what's my purpose? I just want to find my purpose. <laughs> just find a way to glorify God. Did you get that? Someone say, find a way to glorify God. If you begin to find a way to glorify God, God will lead you into your individual purpose. The unique way that you're supposed to do it. But first of all, start with what? The general purpose. Just start. How do I glorify God every day? How do I spread for his glory? How can I show forth his excellence? How can I feel the places I live and neighborhood and all that? I mean, how can I, just in my own little way, how can I spread the glory of God? You will, God will begin to lead you into the individual. Don't start by first wanting to hear from God. God, what are you calling me to do? Are you calling me to, you know, to go to Brazil or Germany? Or are you calling me, you know, to, you know, music ministry or academic ministry? Just start with what you have. Amen? Someone say, start with what you have. Start glorifying God already with what you have. Start glorifying God. 
then you will find your purpose. You will find your, your individual purpose if you focus on that general ultimate purpose of everything. If you join all of creation in glorifying God, then you will find your purpose. Revelation 4.11 says that you have created all things. He said, what is the lamp? Revelation chapter 4 verse 